think of plants as being pretty quiet organisms, but did you know their leaves are covered in thousands of microscopic mouths? These mouths are called stomata. They let carbon dioxide gas from the air into the leaf, or it can be turned into sugars via photosynthesis. Stomata also let water out of the leaf into the air in a process called transpiration. And we're about to get up close and personal with them. In this video, we'll be doing a stomata peel, which is a technique for visualizing all of these teeny tiny mouths. We can't see them if we just stick a leaf under a microscope. We have to do a few extra steps. All we need are some leaves. I'm using oak leaves today. Clear nail polish, clear tape, microscope slides, and a light microscope. First, I'll paint a small patch of nail polish on the leaf, avoiding major veins since they can mess up the peeling process. For funsies, let's compare the top and bottom surfaces of the leaf. Once the nail polish is dry, I'm gonna cover the patch in tape, press down, and then peel back. The nail polish patch comes right up with the tape. Then I simply stick it on a microscope slide, label it, and we're ready to observe some stomata. You just need a regular old light microscope for this, but I'm using one connected to a computer so we can look at the results together. Oh, oh my gosh, look at all the stomata, look at all the mouths. Wow, way to go, oak leaf. We're seeing lots of bumpy leaf cells and some bubbles, and scattered among them are tons of mouth-shaped stomata. Okay, so the stomata are the openings themselves, and then the lips are called guard cells. They control whether the stomata are open or closed. Fun fact, a lot of the genes that control stomata development have really great names like scream, and four lips, and too many mouths. Plant biologists are a pretty fun crew. Okay, so this is the underside of the leaf. There are a lot of stomata there, they're pretty dense. Let's look at the upper surface of the leaf next. How many stomata do you think we'll find there in comparison? Yeah, I am not seeing any stomata here. Okay, why is that? Well, let's think of the different microenvironments the two surfaces of the leaf are experiencing. So the upper surface gets pounded by sunlight all day, while the lower surface experiences shade. Stomata have to be open to let carbon dioxide gas in, but that comes at the cost of losing water. So if you concentrate your stomata on the shady surface of the leaf, it lowers that cost because the water won't evaporate as quickly. Now what'll really blow your mind is that stomata density is also influenced by the concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. If I did a peel on an oak leaf that was picked and preserved 200 years ago, how do you think it would compare to the stomata peel we just did? So scientists have done this, and it turns out that stomata were more dense before the Industrial Revolution, because carbon dioxide levels were lower before we started burning tons of fossil fuels and polluting everywhere. In fact, stomatal density is so strongly correlated with carbon dioxide levels that you can use fossil leaf stomata to estimate carbon dioxide levels in the atmosphere millions of years ago. What? Turns out these tiny mouths have a whole lot to say. Okay, now that you're stomata peel pros, I hope you can have some fun comparing stomatal density, shape, and size across plant species. Go forth and peel.